we'll go on to our next presentation, which is by Giuseppe Amata from CNR. And that talk, Giuseppe is talking to a prototype module, model for visual recognition of otoliths from fish species. Good morning. I'm Giuseppe Mato, and I'm the head of the Artificial Intelligence for Media and Humanities Lab at the EST CNR. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to tell you something about an, an experiment we did with FAO uh, in using artificial intelligence for recognizing otoliths in images. And we basically built a very preliminary prototype able to uh, do this. But first, let me say a few words about the Artificial Intelligence for Media and Humanities Lab, which works on artificial intelligence applied to four different application domains. Artificial intelligence for vision and deep learning, artificial intelligence for text and human language, artificial intelligence for digital humanities, and artificial intelligence for uh, multimedia information retrieval. In a very few words and in a very few pictures, uh, let me tell you what is the um, purpose of the research that we carry out. Uh, th there is plenty of techniques for analyzing images and extracting uh, the content and recognizing the content in, uh, in the image. However, if you have a huge, a large scale database of images and you want to be able to retrieve, to search images in this database according to the content in image uh, things, start to be a bit more difficult. Uh, the uh, research that we do is exactly in this direction, trying to develop solutions for retrieving images in a large scale database without any text associated uh, with images. The lab consists of about 36 people among researchers, research assistants, uh, research associates, have a technician and a person uh, taking care of the administration. And at the moment we have seven uh, PhD students uh, working in our, uh, in our lab. Uh, let me now go to the uh, preliminary experiments that we did in the prototype that we, we built. Uh, let me thank iFramer for uh, providing us with the images for this experiment and also the Research Institute for Development in France for helping with this. Um, here you can see the uh, screenshot of the homepage of the prototype. Uh, you, are, you, you can see some random images coming from the database. You can select, you can click on one of the images or you can also upload one of your images and ask the system to um, recognize the odolithin. And you get a result, a result like this, you see the predicted class or the guessed class, plus you also retrieve similar images from the database uh, of images. Let me show you a live demo of the system. As I said before, you have some uh, random images coming from the database. You can ask for additional random images. And suppose you click on it. When you click, you you can see the result, you have uh, similar images taken from the database, and you also see the predicted class. Let me try again with a different query. For instance, I click on this, and again, you retrieve similar images, and you see the uh, predicted class. Now, let me go back to my presentation. Uh, and let me say just a few words uh, about the details of these preliminary experiments. We use a hybrid convolutional neural network, uh, which was trained uh, on uh, 1,000 different categories with uh, 3 million and a half images. Those 1,000 categories um, comes from the places database 200 images and uh, 900, uh, more than 900 categories come from the ImageNet dataset. In order to improve performance when extracting features with the hybrid convolutional neural network uh, from images of Autolith, we fine tuned the neural network using uh, a subset of images coming from the dataset of Autolith that I mentioned before. 
uh, features are obtained by considering the activations of neurons in the sixth fully connected layer of the uh, neural network. Uh, in order to predict the class, we use a very simple K nearest neighbor classifier. It works as follows. We search for the K most similar images to your query. Uh, uh, for instance, in this example, uh, given the query image, I retrieve 15 similar images to the, to the query. And then I look at the uh, tag associated with the retrieved image. And I uh, consider the most frequent class. So in this example, we have that uh, two images only are tagged as Sardinia. The remaining ones are tagged as Haring. So we predict that the class of the query image is Haring as well. Uh, this is the list of people that worked with this very preliminary experiment. Please feel free to contact me or any other people in this list for additional information. And also feel free to uh, check our website to see uh, what is going on in the lab with our dear research activities, the project, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to uh, receiving some questions from you. Thank you very much. And thanks for sharing Giuseppe and your team. Um, we have some questions for you. One of the main questions that jumped at me immediately when I saw this was not about Otholis, but really it's the overall procedure that you've used because a range of marine product commodities are a big struggle for identification. And we're trying to spend reasonable amounts of funds over years to try to build applications or small apps where people can take pictures of, for example, shark fins, um, show the major points around the shark fin to try to understand if that relates to data which can help us to find the species group those shark fins came from. And this is really important, obviously, when those types of commodities arrive at airports or they're well disconnected from the fishing it's further along the value chain. So I suspect uh, what other kind of conversations you've had that in your group, what other type of uh, suggestions have come up where the procedure you've used could be uh, used across other aquatic species or any related species? Or was it really the case that you had an amazing data set of over 3 million images and thought, wow, with that kind of power, we should be able to break through? What was the, what was the thinking behind coming to this project and, and the thinking maybe for the future? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, for the questions. In fact, we, we had some discussion about trying to also recognize uh, uh, shark fin uh, with people from FAO. Uh, actually, uh, nowadays, one of the major limitations in using artificial intelligence to real application is the uh, availability of data. <laughs> Typically, you have very powerful algorithms that can do almost uh, everything but provide that you have data to train them, data to extract knowledge from them. And in fact, uh, what we did with the other, it's, it's, uh, is exactly this. We uh, started from an existing uh, convolutional neural network, which was trained for different tasks, for different applications. And we fine tuned it using data of uh, annotated other uh, Yeah. We, we can use a similar or probably exactly the same procedure also to move to a different application, like for instance, fin, uh, sh shark fin recognition. Um, provide that you have enough data, provide that you have, let's say, reasonable computational power in order to analyze uh, your data. Uh, you can build a new database of knowledge, which you can use, which, which, which you can exploit to uh, recognize other leads. I mean, either you can also have a kind of application running on a mobile phone, which allow you to, to be in place with your mobile phone, take a picture to the shark fin and uh, deciding about the uh, species the shark fin comes from. Uh, um, yeah, actually we, we already touched with how our hands, that data set of uh, images coming from shark fins, it is just a matter to start doing some additional experiments and it, it can be done quite easily, I mean, yeah, using similar procedures. Matt, have you got a question for Giuseppe? Thank you very much for that answer. 
yeah, I suppose it brings the uh, your um, uh, highlighting value chains thing brings us to think about the verification process of that data as well. So, for example, with commodities that we don't know uh, what what source species they are, we need to run a DNA test on that material as well as um, as well as adding them to the data set, which is perhaps another component we can think about verification um, processes for, for the data that's collected. Um, we could maybe add that to the whiteboard later. Yeah, actually, um, sometimes, I mean, th there is a big focus uh, uh, recently on artificial intelligence in giving explanation on why some decisions are, are taken. And those explanations can also be used as a hint for verification of the various procedures. Uh, you know, when, when you go to the doctor and you ask um, for his uh, consultancy, the doctor, the doctor, the doctor uh, does not just tell you uh, the problem is this, but he tells you uh, the problem is this, why you have something, et cetera, et cetera. Using a procedure that, like the one that we used, you can have similar explanation. You remember in my, uh, in my video, when I showed, uh, I showed the demo, in addition to predict the class, we retrieve similar images from the database. And I mean, a person using the tool can also try to verify if the decision taken is reasonable, looking at similar images taken from the database, which are already annotated. So this probably might be might go in the direction of explaining and also verifying that the decision taken by the system are sound and correct. I don't know, I'm not sure that this was your, uh, the direction of your questions, but I hope this somehow uh, light up some. <laughs> yeah, no, it does link to it. Um, I was more highlight. I was also highlighting the um, when it comes to uh, ambiguous commodities that we want to know the origin of. Um, we may well have uh, a million pictures of, of shark fins, but we're, unless there's a, a DNA test to prove what species they were originally. Uh, which adds another dimension of cost onto the actual process of uh, building models, doesn't it? Um, I think that was my point. Okay. Now, what about you, Anton? Is, have you got a question? Uh, it's uh, again a bit about the metadata that come with the pictures. So, uh, does WISEPA have any vision where we can build on a more global system of metadata? So, any formal rules or formats of metadata for AI assisted data analysis? Oh, yeah, uh, uh, currently the data model behind the scene that we used for, for this experiment was very, very simple. I mean, every image in the uh, training set that we used to fine tune and also to uh, run the classification algorithm are simply associated with the class of the other given by a, an expert of the domain. Uh, yeah, probably this can also be extended with additional information. I think one interesting thing, uh, that can be useful to know in otoliths is the age of the fish. I mean, deciding not just the uh, fish species, I mean, the, the category uh, of the fish uh, which the otolith was, was taken from, but also knowing the age of the otolith. Provided that we have the, this data, we can also try to, and this should be uh, somehow included in the, um, in, the data, in the metadata associated with images, Provided that we have that information, we can also try to run additional to to, to extra additional knowledge from uh, from the data set and run some classification algorithm able not only to determine the species the species but also the age of the fish where it was taken from. Uh, uh, you know, is uh, the, the more data you have in your knowledge base, the, the more data you have in your metadata, the more information you can extract in order to. Uh, train the AI algorithm to uh, take decision or suggest decision on the given images. And thank you very much, Giuseppe. It reminds me of a story where they had a massive data set of uh, pictures of iris of the human. And uh, they worked out a way of using AI to identify cancers of the iris. But in the same time, they were entering the metadata which meant that eventually the AI was being able to tell the researchers if it was a male or female iris. And yet this was coming from the metadata training, but no human knows what the AI is doing. 
in front of no, no human even suggesting knowing what the AI is doing to be able to tell a picture of an iris, whether it came from a male or female, yet it was 97%. Anyway.